Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5 Coordinate Geometry Involving Circles. So we're going to look at a variety of different types of questions. We're going to see how we can find the equation of a circle given a centre and a radius. And the reverse, if we're given the equation of a circle uh, either in this nice form here or not in this nice form, how we can find the centre and the radius. We're going to see how we can find the equation of a circle given the two endpoints for diameter. We can reason about the intersection of straight lines with circles. We're going to see how to find the equation of a tangent of a circle. We're going to see how we can reason about the chord and the perpendicular bisect of that chord within a circle. We're going to see how to find the equation of a circle given three points. And we're also going to use Pythagoras to solve certain circle related problems as well. But let's start with the general equation of a circle. If you were doing GCSE in the UK, for example, you might have seen the equation of a circle centered the origin that if you had a point x, y in the circle, some generic point, and the radius of the circle was r, then if we turn this into a right angle triangle, then we know this distance here is just x, because it's the distance between here and here where the x-coordinate is x, and then this distance here, because that's y, this distance here is y, and then using Pythagoras we can see that x squared plus y squared is r squared. So that would be the general equation of a circle with radius r if the circle is centered at the origin. But let's just say that we put the circle somewhere else. So we had some other center AB. And again, let's consider just some generic point x, y on the circle. If we use the same kind of strategy of forming a right angle triangle, again, the radius of the circle we're going to say is r. This distance here is the difference in the x values. So to get from a to x, well, we just subtract those. That distance is x minus a. And that distance here, similarly, is y minus b. So then if we use Pythagoras again, we have the x minus a squared plus the y minus b squared is equal to that radius squared. And that is the equation of a circle where the center is AB and the radius of the circle is equal to R. And notice by the way that the center was 3, 4, it would be X minus 3 and Y minus 4. So these values here will get negated. That will be irrelevant for this first question we're going to do here. So if we had center 0, 0 and radius 3, what would be the equation? will be x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared, because we're subbing the 0 in as the a and the 0 here is the b, equals r squared, 3 squared is 9, but we don't care about these minus zeros, it's just x squared plus y squared is 9, just as we did it at GCC, for example. What about b? We've now got centre 4, 7 and radius 5, Again, let's just sub those into our equation. So it's x minus the a, that's the a, squared, plus the y minus, that's the b, squared, equals r squared. 5 squared is 25. So that's the equation of that circle. C, we've got 5 minus 1 and radius 4. Again, to sub it in, we have x minus the a, 5 squared, plus y minus minus 1, which will become y plus 1. So we can see that whatever signs of these are, they get negated when we insert them in here. Equals r squared, so that's 16. And finally, if we had 0, 5, and r is 1, well, we effectively have x minus 0 squared, which is just x squared, so we don't need a bracket plus y minus 5 squared is equal to 1 squared, which is just 1. And what about 2a and b? This first equation here, we've got x squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 64. So we can see here, this is effectively x minus 0 squared, so the a is the 0. And then remember, we negated these values when we inserted them, so this minus 3 gets negated to become Three. So if b was 3, we have y minus b, y minus 3. And the radius is just going to be the square of this, because if r squared is 64, then r is clearly going to be 8. And what about the second one? If we had x plus 1 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 7, then the centre is just going to be where we negate these values, so minus 1, 5. 
and the radius is going to be the square root of that 7, so we could just write the square root of 7. Now, question 3 is slightly harder, because again we've got the equation of these circles, but it's not in this nice form here, where we could just directly read off the centre and radius of the circle. So this is the equation of our first one, and what we need to do is to put it in this particular form. And you might notice that we have completed squares here. And what I mean by completed square is when we have, for example, x plus something all square. That's known as a completed square, where the x only appears once inside a bracket which is squared. And if you haven't seen how to complete the square, then I recommend you watch that video first. But let's put the x terms together so that we'll be able to easily complete the square in a second. And let's put the y terms together. So we've got y squared plus 2y. And we've got the minus 6 equals 0. And now we're going to complete the square here and complete the square here. So the method we use to complete the square is we have, open a bracket, we have x, then we halve the number in front of the x, the coefficient of the x, so that's minus 3 all squared. Now if we were to expand that, that would give us x squared minus 6x, but it would also give us a plus 9 term. We don't want that plus 9, so we're going to minus 9. So we square that value and subtract it. Then this one, open a bracket, y, half of 2 is 1, so y plus 1 squared. Then we square that value of plus 1 and minus it. Now we're nearly done. We've got the x minus 3 squared, and we've got the y plus 1 squared. And then we put everything else on the other side. So minus 9 minus 1 minus 6 is minus 16. If I add it to the other side, it becomes positive 16. And we can see, therefore, that the centre is, if we just negate these values, positive 3, minus 1, and the radius is 4. And then just one more of those quickly. We've got x squared plus y squared minus 20x minus 16y plus 139 equals 0. That was actually an exam question. Then again, we put the x terms together, and we put the y terms together. We complete the square with each of these halves, so that's going to be x minus half of minus 20 is minus 10, and we minus that square, which is minus 100. Then we have y, half the minus 16 is minus 8 squared. We minus that squared, which is 64, plus 139 equals 0. And then that becomes x minus 10 squared, plus y minus 8 squared. And then I'm just going to use my calculator to simplify the rest. So we get minus 25, put it over to the other side, it becomes positive 25. So we can see the centre is 10, 8 and the radius is the square root of the 25, which is. What about the next question? The points a, 5 minus 1, and b, 13, 11, give the diameter a, b of a circle. So if I just draw that approximately, it doesn't matter exactly whether the point's in the right position. We've got a diameter a, b, and then we're saying that these points have coordinates 5 minus 1 and 13, 11. And we want to find the equation of this circle. Well, we need two things to find the equation of a circle. We need the centre of the circle, and we need the radius of the circle, and then we can just use our usual equation. So let's find the centre of the circle first. Well, to find that centre, that's just the midpoint of A and B, isn't it? Well, to find the midpoint, remember, we just average the x values and average the y values. So to find the average of the x values, you add them divided by 2. 5 plus 13 divided by 2 is 9 and minus 1 plus 11 divided by 2 is 5. So we've now got the centre of our circle, and we need the radius of the circle. So we can either find the distance directly between, say, this point and the centre of the circle, or we could find the distance between A and B, which is a diameter, and then halve it to get the radius. So I'm just going to directly use these two points. Now, do you remember, to find the distance between two points, the formula is the square root of the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. That's just capital delta, meaning change in. So if we use it here, the change from 5 to 9 is 4, so it's 4 squared. And the change in the y here from minus 1 to 5 is 6, so 6 squared. So that gives us the square root of 16 plus 36 is 52, so that's the radius. And now we have everything we need for the equation of a circle. So that's just going to be x minus the a, which is the 9 here squared, plus the y minus the b, which is a 5, that's the y value of the centre, is equal to the radius squared. So root 52 squared is just 52. So that would be the equation of that circle.
Now question five, we're going to reason about straight lines intersecting uh, circle lines. Find the coordinates of the points where the line y equals x plus 6 meets the circle x squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 29. Now to find the point of intersection of two lines, we just solve them simultaneously. We've seen that in previous videos. So we've got y equals x plus 6 and we've got x squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 29. Now, do you remember, when you solve quadratic simultaneous equations, we just substitute the linear equation into the quadratic equation. So if y is equal to x plus 6, I can just sub that in as the y here. So I've got x squared plus the y, which is x plus 6, minus 3 squared equals 29. And then I'm just going to simplify that bracket. That's x plus 3 squared now we want to expand it out, so we have x squared plus x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 29. Now to solve a quadratic, we get it all on one side. Now we have 2x squared here, we have the plus 6x, and then minus the 29, we get minus 20 equals 0. I could simplify this equation just by dividing everything by 2. And then this is going to nicely factorise, so that factorises to x plus 5 and x minus 2. And then we can see we've got products of two things is 0, so either the x plus 5 is 0, so x is minus 5, or x minus 2 is 0, so x is 2. And then we substitute those two values back through either of these equations, but it's easiest to use this first one here. So if y is the x value plus 6, then minus 5 plus 6 is 1, and 2 plus 6 is 8. So we've got therefore the two points of intersection, we've got minus 5, 1, and we've got 2, 8. So that's where that straight line intersects this circle here. What about this second one here? Show that the line y equals x plus 3 never intersects the circle with equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. So let's attempt to find the point of intersection and then we need to basically prove that there's going to be a problem, that there is no point of intersection. So let's write these equations. y equals x plus 3 and x squared plus y squared equals 1. Let's use the usual approach. We're going to sub this into here. So we've got x squared plus the y squared, so x plus 3 squared equals 1. Let's expand out in the same way. And I'm going to minus that 1 to bring it to the other side. Let's simplify. And then to simplify, I could divide everything by 2 because everything is even. Now, we would try and solve this in order to find the point of intersection, but apparently there is no point of intersection. And the way we can prove that this has no solution is to use the discriminant, which we've seen in a previous video. So to find the discriminant, we write out our a. So the a is the number in front of the x squared. The b is the number in front of the x. And the c is the constant term. And then do you remember that the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. If you haven't seen that before, then you need to learn about that first. So if we do the b squared, we get 9 minus 4 times 1 times 4, which is equal to minus 7. And this discriminant is less than 0, and you remember that tells you, therefore, there's no solutions. And if there's no solutions to that equation, then therefore, there are no points of intersection. Right, question 7. A circle has centre 3, 5 and goes through 6, 9. Find the equation of the tangent of the circle at the point P, giving your equation in the form ax plus py plus c equals 0, where a, b and c are integers. Well, if I just do a quick sketch of this, we have a centre 3, 5, and it goes through some point 6, 9. And then we have the tangent at that point P, and we want to find the equation of this tangent. Now, I actually explore this in another video, and it is covered in the GCC syllabus, but the way we do it is this. Do you remember the circle theorem that the tangent is perpendicular to the radius of the circle at that particular point? So if we find the gradient of this line, then we can easily find the gradient of this line. Now, what's the gradient of this line here? Well, this gradient here is equal to the change in y over the change in x using these two points 3, 5 and 6, 9. And the change in y from 5 to 9 is 4, the change in x from 3 to 6 is 3, and that is the gradient of this line, 4 over 3. And that means the gradient of this tangent will be the negative reciprocal of that. So we negate that, so it's minus, and then reciprocate it. When we reciprocate a fraction, it flips it to become 3 over 4. So we've got everything we need now. We've got a fixed point on the line 
and we've got the gradient of the line, so we can just use our usual formula, y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. So this is our x1, y1, that's our fixed point on the line, and the m is the minus 3 quarters. So y minus the y1, which is 9, is equal to m minus 3 quarters x minus x1, so x minus 6. Now we need this in this particular form, ax plus by equals c equals 0, with just integers. So we don't want this fraction here, we don't want the over 4, so we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 4 to get 4y minus 36 equals minus 3, we've got rid of the over 4, x minus 6. We don't times that bracket by 4 as well, because otherwise 4 times this by 16 instead, which would be bad. Uh, expand out the bracket, and we want everything on the side, preferably where x is positive, so I'm going to move everything to the left. We have 3x plus 4y, and then minus 36 minus 18 is minus 54. And that is our completed equation of that tangent there. Question 8. A circle passes through the points 0, 0 and 4, 2. So let's draw that. So it passes through 0, 0 and 4, 2. Let's put that here. And the centre of the circle has x value minus 1. So we've got minus 1 here, and we don't know where on this line it is, but the centre is going to be like somewhere like here. So we have a circle like that. Yep. Sorry, it's not a very good circle there. So how do we reason about this? Well, there's an important circle theorem here, and it's this. That if you have a chord of the circle, these were two points in the circle, and this is a chord connecting those two points, then when you find the perpendicular bisector of any chord on the circle, it will pass through the centre of the circle. And what I mean by perpendicular bisector is it cuts this chord in half, so these are the same length, and it's perpendicular bisector, so it's at right angles to that. So let's try and find the equation of this line here. Now we need two things to find this equation. We need some fixed point on that line, let's use that midpoint here, and we need the gradient of the line. Well, we'll concentrate on the midpoint first. What's the midpoint of 0, 0 and 4, 2? Well, you can just do it in your head, it's 2, 1. We also need the gradient of this line. Well, the gradient of this chord is going to be the change in y, so the change in y from 0 to 2, which is 2, over the change in x, 0 to 4 is 4. So we can see that that gradient between these two points on the chord is half. And that means this gradient here is a negative reciprocal of that, which is minus 2. So now we've got everything we need to find the equation of this line. We've got some fixed point on that line, which is 2, 1, and we know that the gradient is minus 2. So we just use our y minus y1 equation. y minus that y1 equals m x minus that x1. And we're told that the centre of the circle, the x value is minus 1. So there's no need to manipulate this. We can sub in the minus 1 into this equation in order to work out what the y value has to be. So we sub in the x is minus 1. We get y minus 1 equals minus 2. And then the x is minus 1. So minus 1 minus 2. So we get y minus 1 is minus 2 times minus 3, which is 6. And so y is therefore equal to 7. So we've now worked out that the centre of the circle is minus 1, 7. So remember, to find the equation of a circle, we need the centre of the circle and we need the radius of the circle. Now to find the radius of the circle, we just find the distance between some point on the circle, 0, 0 will do, and that centre. So if we've got minus 1, 7 as the centre and some point on the circle, 0, 0, what is the distance between them, well that radius, that distance, is going to be the square root of the change in x squared, so the change there is 1, 1 squared, plus the change in y. Now the change in y is minus 7, but we're just squaring it, so we just might as well treat it as a positive number, and that gives us the square root of 50. And now we're done. We've got the equation of the circle is going to be using the general equation, just to remind you, is this for the equation of a circle. So we've got x minus the a of the centre, which is minus 1, so that's going to be x plus 1 squared, plus y minus the y value of the centre, which is 7, is equal to r squared, root 50 squared is 50, and that is the answer. Now this next question is very similar, but just a bit harder. We've got the points 0, 2, so let's plot these. We've got 0, 2, b, 2, 0, and c, 8, 18, it's going to be somewhere up here. 
they lie on the circumference of a circle. So there's a circle that goes through these three points. Determine the equation of the circle. Now we can use the same principle here. We know that the centre of the circle lies on the perpendicular bisector of any chord of the circle. Now, this is a chord of the circle that goes through to those two points, so we know therefore that it will lie on this perpendicular bisector. And then we could pick another two points. So if we were to use, say, the 2, 0 and the 8, 18, and connect those with a chord, then if we were to find the perpendicular bisector of those, then again that would go through the centre. So you might therefore be able to see that if we had the equations of these two perpendicular bisectors and we were to find the point of intersection, that would give us the centre of the circle. We could have also picked these two points and found the perpendicular bisector of that chord as well. But we just need two chords, so we get two perpendicular bisectors and find the point of intersection of those two lines. Now let's first think about the equation of the perpendicular bisector here. Do you remember we need the midpoint and the gradient of this line? Well, the gradient of this line here between 0, 2 and 2, 0, just by changing y over change in x, we can see is minus 1. And this centre here, well, halfway between 0 and 2 is 1, halfway between 2 and 0 is 1 again. So this is a line that goes through 1, 1, and the gradient, well, that gradient is minus 1, then the gradient of this line is a negative reciprocal of minus 1, which will be 1. So we've got a gradient of 1, and this line goes through 1, 1, this perpendicular bisector, the dotted line. Then what's the equation? Well, y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. And if we simplify that, we just simply get y is equal to x. And you might have been able to see that by observation, because this line is sort of at 45 degrees down like that. So this line is 45 degrees up like that, going through the origin by symmetry. And you can see that will just be y equals x. So we've got this line here. The equation is y equals x. Now we need to do a similar thing with these two points. So we've got 2, 0 and 8, 18. So we'll find the gradient first. The gradient is going to be change in y, so 18, over change in x, 6. So the gradient is equal to 3. But if the gradient of this is equal to 3, then the gradient of this perpendicular bisector is going to be minus a third, the negative reciprocal of that. And we need the midpoint as well. So that gives you a midpoint of, if we average the x values, that's 5. If we average the y values, it's 9. So we can see this point here is 5, 9. So we've got the midpoint is 5, 9. The gradient that we care about is minus a third. And then we just use y minus y1 again. So y minus y1 is equal to mx minus x1. And now we've got the equation of both of these dotted lines. So this line here and this perpendicular bisector here as well. Now there's no need to manipulate this. We want to find the point of intersection of these two lines. So we solve these two equations simultaneously. Now it's quite convenient that y is equal to x because I can just replace this y here with x. So if I do that, I get x minus 9 is equal to minus a third x minus 5. Uh, I'm going to times both sides by 3 because I don't like that third there. So we get 3x minus 27 is equal to minus x minus 5. So 3x minus 27 is equal to minus x plus 5. And then that gives you 4x is equal to 32. So x is equal to 8. And then if y is equal to x on this line, then we know that the y value is also going to be 8. And therefore the point of intersection is going to be 8, 8. Now we're nearly done, but we've got to get the equation of the circle. We know that the centre of the circle now is 8, 8. But we also need to get the radius of the circle. So we need the centre of the circle, which is 8, 8, and some point on the circle. It doesn't matter what we use. Let's use this point A, 0, 2, which is on the circle. And the radius will be the distance between those two points. So the radius is the square root of the change in x squared. Well, that changes 8. So 8 squared plus a change in y, that changes 6. And that gives you a radius of 10. So we've got everything we need now. Then the equation of the circle will be x minus the x value of the center, which is 8 squared, plus y minus 8 squared again is equal to the radius squared, which will be equal to 100. And there we go. We've got the equation of this circle. Now the final question in this very, very long video 
The circle C has radius 5 and touches the y-axis at 0, 9. Its equation is x plus 5 squared plus y minus 9 squared is 25. We could have in fact worked out that equation given that information we've just been given. But let's just copy this. We can see that the center of the circle using that equation is going to be minus 5, 9. So that's minus 5, 9. And a line goes through the point 8 minus 7. So that's going to be somewhere down here. So P, 8 minus 7. And it's a tangent to the circle C at the point T. Well, if it's a tangent, then we could either have our tangent like this, and then the point P could be here, or our tangent could be like this going through the point P, and our point T could be here as well. But it doesn't actually matter because we don't actually need to work out where T is. We just need to work out the length of PT. So let's just ignore this line. And we're going to say the tangent to the circle is at this point T. And this tangent goes through the point P8 minus 7. How do you work this out? Well, whenever you have a length type problem, you should always think how you might be able to use Pythagoras. And if we're using Pythagoras, we have a right angle triangle somewhere. So do you remember that a tangent is at right angles to the radius. So that's a right angle there. And if we were to draw a line like this, then we complete this right angle triangle. So we need to find the length of PT, this line here. But we actually can work out the length of the other two lines. Now we're told that the radius of the circle is 5, so this length here is 5. And we can easily find this length here as well, because we've got these two points. So if I just call this point A, then the length of AP is the square root of the change in x squared, so from minus 5 to 8 is 13 squared, plus the change in y, so 9 to minus 7 is 16, so 16 squared. And if I do that on my calculator, I get the square root of 425. So we know that this length is root 425, so if we just concentrate on that right angle triangle, We've got this length is 5, this length is root 425, and this is the length PT that we need to find. So we just have to use Pythagoras again. So PT is just going to be the square root of the hypotenuse squared, which is 45, minus the shorter length squared, which is 5 squared is 25. That gives you the square root of 400, which nicely is 20. And there we go. We have solved this problem.